John Cola with DiscountJuicers.com. Today of another exciting episode for you. What I'm going to do today for you guys is something that's often, you know, asked me is, John, you know, I hate cleaning my juicer. How can I make juicer cleaning easier? What can I do? And so that's actually, this video is my top tips for how you can clean your juicer fast and easy. And that's simply it. You know, I want you guys to not see cleaning your juicer as a hindrance. Right, a lot of people think, oh, I gotta use a juicer because it's healthy and it's good for you. Because you know, I could lose weight and have more energy and and you know, uh, get more of the beneficial phytonutrients and uh, phytochemicals and vitamins and minerals into me, so I could disease-proof myself. But at the same time, people like really dread the cleanup. Now, let me tell you something. I personally dread the cleanup <laughs> of my toilet bowl more than the juicer, actually. Some juicers, actually I look forward to ju juicing and cleaning because it works so easily and is very simple to clean, much easier than scrubbing and getting all the, the stains out of my toilet bowl. <laughs> anyway, that might be TMI. But in any case, a juicer cleaning does not have to be that hard and with these 10 tips I'm going to share with you guys, it's going to be easy so that you guys could include more fresh fruits and fresh vegetables uh, in your diet through juicing because juicing allows you to supersize the amount of fruits and vegetables to eat because a standard American is simply not eating enough of these beneficial fruits and vegetables that are uh, disease pre preventative and have many phytochemicals and phytonutrients and are, are low in calories compared to other foods that people are eating such as processed foods and animals that are very high in calories but lower nutrition. Uh, fresh vegetable juices especially are high in nutrition and low in calories and these are the foods we really want to focus on if you have goals like losing weight or maintaining your weight like I have now for the last 20 years or having more energy or healing yourself uh, from uh, you know health challenges you may be having you know I've met many people and they've given me their testimonials on how they've lost weight and had have more energy and even had healed you know some of their alien conditions that they've had for many years by simply including more fruit and vegetable juices in their diet. So without further ado, let's get into the 10 tips so you can be juicing easily and cleaning your juicer easily and uh, you know, so you can enjoy the fresh fruit and vegetable juices. So tip number one, the biggest tip I wanna share with you guys, and if you don't remember anything else in this video, remember this one, and that's why this tip is going first. Clean the juicer right after you're done juicing. This is super important, super critical. You know, even if the phone rings, don't leave the juicer with all the pulp sitting inside there, the stain setting in, the pulp drying in the screen, you know, it's just gonna make cleaning, you know, five times harder if you let your juicer sit for any length of time after you, you know, uh, are done juicing. You know, I've got distracted, it doesn't happen very often, but I got distracted and let my juicer sit for two hours and it made the juice cleaning you know, about twice as hard and I was not looking forward to cleaning it because now the stains are kind of set in. So that's definitely not good. So clean the juicer right after you're done using it. Tip number two, have the proper tools to clean your juicer, right? And I got a few here today I'm gonna to share with you guys. First thing I wanna share with you guys, a sponge, a standard scrubbing sponge, you know, even if it has a scouring pad on there, that's not a proper tool to clean the juicer. That's kind of like, uh, you know, mashing in the pulp and it doesn't really clean things too well. So what I recommend is a nice uh, bristle brush, a stiff bristle brush. I get actually mine at Ikea. I really like the ones they have there. They're actually inexpensive, so I replace these often so they don't get any kind of bacterial buildup or anything like that. You could also put these in the dishwasher to sterilize them. But the bristles are nice and stiff, not like soft. So, you know, like a toothbrush could be quite a soft. These are nice and stiff to really get in there and scrub free uh, the stuck on pulp. In addition, many juicers these days come with cleaning brushes. Now here's a brush that one of the juicers come with, but the big challenge is, you know, see the brush tip? It's like there's not a lot of br uh, bristles on there, whereas there's at least uh, two times and three times more bristles on my brush. So that's why I use my brush instead of the brush that comes with the machine, because now my actions are basically multiplied by a factor of two or three because there are that many more bristles 
that are going to contact all the different surfaces of the juicer uh, to get them clean. Uh, the other thing that you may want to do is have some other kinds of brushes. So, you know, I have brushes like these. These were purchased at a really cool Japanese store called Daiso, and this is like a buck fifty or something for these three brushes. But there's different sizes. So this allows you to get in different, uh, you know, ports of the machine, such as the spouts and some of the hard to reach areas uh, with these special brushes. So I really like that a lot. Uh, some other uh, items I use to clean the juicer that have been helpful for me in the past are like um, one of these uh, Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. Uh, this can help to like basically buff out any kind of uh, residual stains that may be stuck in the juicer uh, to get them out. Uh, this does work with varying degrees of success. And to, to not uh, necessarily clean the juicer parts, but to clean the juicer body and motor body, um, I like to use uh, one of these um, uh, microfiber cloths here. Uh, it, it tends to basically uh, really scrub and get in there e more easily than a paper towel or a cotton uh, cloth would just because it's almost like it's almost it's like it's like it's like a really fine grit sandpaper but it won't scratch anything because it really picks up and carries uh, the dirt or uh, you know the stains off with it and sometimes I wet this a little bit to help us uh, scrub and get in there now I want to next demonstrate actually how I use the cleaning brush uh, to clean the juicers we have uh, the Breville Juice Fat Elite here and this is a centrifugal ejection style machine probably the most popular style uh, juicers on the market at this time the centrifugal ejection. I'm not a big fan of the centrifugal ejection style machines so I will put a link down below in the description to where I compare the uh, slow versus the fast juicers because each of them have their pros and cons. Um, I personally believe now at this point that the uh, high speed juicers are m more so a con than a pro and, and are maybe not so good. But in any case, uh, you know, here's the top part we can get in here with a brush and uh, brush out all the areas. But the hardest part to clean on any juicer is not necessarily uh, the juicer parts, you know, that you get your brush in and clean out and wipe out. But the, the hardest part to clean on any juicer is the juicing screen. It's these little fine stainless steel holes that literally pulp will get clogged into and when pulp gets clogged into these holes and it fills them and you don't clean it immediately pulp will get stuck in there and then dry which will then effectively uh, close up the pores of of the holes on the juicer which means the juice will not be able to flow out of the juicer which means your, your yield will be reduced so with the large brush I just take this and, and brush this out all the way around and then also on the back side right as I'm uh, putting this underneath water underneath the sink and uh, you know just doing this a few times while the water is blasting on it is enough generally to get it clean so yeah have the right tools and that's going to make uh, juicer cleanup significantly easier all right third tip is a cleaning tip having to do with the pulp catch bin this is the pulp catch bin on the breville juice down elite the pulp is ejected out here at very high rates of speed and if this is not in place, you're going to get pulp flying everywhere. Actually, I prefer the low RPM or the slow juices because the pulp just kind of dribbles out at a slow and moderate pace. But in any case, this next tip will work with either style of juicer, high speed or slow juicers. And what it has to do with it has to do with your pulp catch bin and just simply taking one of those plastic produce bags that you've got that you purchased your produce in and lining this with the plastic bag. In this way, when you're done, you know, you could take out this plastic bag and if you have a compostable plastic bag, you can actually just put it in your compost pile. I compost all my food scraps, but when you uh, have all the pulp in a plastic bag, you just take the plastic bag out, uh, throw this in the freezer if you want to reuse your pulp later and add it to soups or, uh, you know, a banana bread or whatever else or cakes or pies. And then you don't have to clean this one, so that's going to save you some time right there. Tip number four to save time and make cleaning your juicer easier is to buy a juicer with less parts to clean and more importantly less screen area to clean. As I just showed you guys just a little bit ago uh, the most difficult part to clean on any machine is the juicing screen because the pulp gets stuck in all these holes around here. Uh, the Breville Juice Fan Elite takes me several minutes to clean 
And over here we have the Omega NC800, which in my opinion is the easiest juicer to clean on the whole entire market at this time. Uh, there's just a few parts to clean, including the end cap, the juice screen, the auger, and then this uh, main housing that easily comes off that you could basically just blast water through and brush out. But I want to show you guys the screen area because that's a you know important factor for me in cleaning. And so this is a Breville uh, screen. You can see like there's just a lot of screen area with the holes. And on the NC800, you can see this is the screen area and it's uh, cylindrical. And there's just not a lot of screen area. If we took this and unwrapped it all, all the way, it might be like a quarter of the screen area of the Breville Juice Fountain Elite. In addition, there's a first stage juicing screen here that is made out of plastic. So pretty much because these holes are nice and large, uh, pulp does not get stuck in them as it does these smaller holes in the stainless steel section. So this makes cleaning of the NC800 even easier. Uh, for me, it takes me about a minute and a half to clean this machine. It probably takes me on the Breville at least double that. So yes, purchase a juicer that is easier to clean. So the Omega NC800 is the easiest horizontal single auger juicer to clean. And if you're looking for a vertical single auger juicer that's easy to clean, the easiest one to date is the Omega VSJ843. And that's the one I choose to use in my kitchen because it actually is easier to clean than any other vertical single auger. Plus it works overall a little bit better than most other machines on the market. Tip number five when cleaning your juicer, I like to wash my juicer in the kitchen sink. And in my kitchen sink, I have an option of uh, sprays on my faucet. So normally they have that standard aerated faucet spray that just kind of like dribbles the water out. It just has a single stream. Instead of using that to clean my juicer, I always put it on the one that's like a shower like you know rain beads that are dispersed and they're coming down at more high pressure so there's smaller lines of, uh, of water streams coming on at more higher pressure and then I have that running while I'm brushing with the brush the screen and the juicer parts underneath the running water and this helps to move the pulp off the juicing screen and off the juicing parts into the sink which then is caught by my strainer in the sink which all those particles go in my compost pile but uh, by using the high pressure sprayer on in your faucet it's going to be a lot easier to clean of course i know some of you guys want to save water and not run the water the whole time that's fine you could just scrub yours under underneath water you know in a tub of water if you want to save water that's going to take a little bit longer because the the pulp is not being uh, dislodged by the blasting of the water out. That being said, another reason uh, to use the sprayer is when you're spraying and cleaning your produce of the dirt, the germs, and the bacteria. You know, it's been shown that just the pressure of spraying the water on your uh, produce can help clean uh, some of the residual toxins off of it. Tip number six is actually a tip I like to give you guys. I often get emails that says, hey John, you know, I, I haven't been the best at cleaning my juicer. My juicer is quite stained and it has the, you know, the orange carotenoid carrot stains or like uh, turmeric stains or beet stains or just green juice stains in the juicer. And those are the colored pigmented stains. Juicers will also pick up on mineral deposit stains if you have hard water and clean your juicers with hard water. So for both these situations, I recommend doing the same thing. And basically what that is, is soaking uh, the juicer parts in like a big dish tub or a five gallon bucket with hot water and cascade uh, dishwasher detergent. So that's the kind you'd use in an automatic dishwasher. Put a bunch of that cascade in there with hot water, soak your juicer parts overnight uh, after you take them out the next day. Uh, and then scrub them with a brush underneath running water and that should clean up the juicer to looking like new for you guys. If you don't want to use the Cascade, you know I have heard that people also use vinegar and baking soda. Put that on there, let it soak in and then, uh, then scrub your juicer. You may have to soak it in a, you know, once again a tub of water to get all your juicer stains out. Now in the past I actually have made videos and I have recommended using OxyClean and hot water and soaking your parts in that, which I have done, which does work, 
but I'm concerned that doing this over a long period of time may damage the plastic on the juicers and this is something I was not aware about earlier but am now so now I'm uh, updating you know what I recommend to you guys based on my latest information. Tip number seven I want to share with you guys today is actually came from one of my customers actually so thank you <laughs> is um and this is a good one you know uh, it's juice ice when you're finished juicing now this will work better or worse depending on the style of juicer you have on the slow juicers this will work much better than on the high speed juicers which actually it just might make a mess but it's still gonna probably clean a little bit but anyways by juicing some ice in a slow juicer the ice will go in there the juicer will fractionate the ice into small bits. Those small bits will actually run through the juicer and dislodge pieces of pulp that would be normally stuck in the juicer when you're done and ready to clean. Also, when you're juicing ice, the juicer will crush up the ice into small bits that will help clean the juicer as like a grit, but then it'll actually melt into your juice and then you'll have maybe a little bit of extra water in your juice um, when you're finished. So this is actually a brilliant idea and this is something that you may want to try but be careful don't put too large a pieces of ice in some juicers or it actually may damage the juicer which would not be a good thing another thing you can do with ice especially on the vertical single auger juicers uh, because those juicers tend to get clogged up or if you want to switch out juicing one juice to another juice is juice ice in between the different ingredients you're juicing because once again that'll help flush and push through some of the ingredients. So this is something I actually have not tried yet, but I thought I'd share with you because it is valuable and may be able to help you, uh, you know, get the juicer cleaner so you don't have to do as much scrubbing uh, when you're done juicing. Tip number eight is for juicers like vertical juicers that have a stopper on the spout that prevents dripping on your counter, but it also allows you to use an auto cleaning feature of the vertical juicers with the spout cap. So when you're done juicing, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and close the spout cap and pour in about 24 ounces of water. And basically the water is gonna circulate as the automatic wiping blade is spinning around and this will help to dislodge some of the pulp and clean out your juicer just a little bit. Let it run for like a minute or two and then drain out all the uh, dirty water and you actually you could use that to water your plants outside or inside and then close that up and then now you're ready to take apart this juicer and uh, you know ready to clean it and that's going to make uh, cleaning a little bit easier and that only works on uh, the vertical juicers with the spout cap. So tip number nine is for those of you guys that weren't paying attention to tip number one <laughs> which is clean your juicer immediately right after you're done juicing. So this tip is if you're not gonna clean it immediately and you've gotta do something else, right? Minimally, take all the juicer parts, you know, off the machine, take all the juicer apart and just uh, put these and soak them in a dish pan with hot water and dish soap or, you know, in your sink with a plug in there, but soak them in water with some dish soap. You know, and that way the stains will not set in as bad as if you didn't do this. So the worst part of cleaning any juicer is if the juicer is sitting unclean for any length of time that really 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 makes a cleaning harder so you know if you're not going to do it immediately minimally soak the parts but I do encourage you guys to uh, you know clean it right after you're done. So tip number 10 on cleaning your juicer is something that you may not be expecting from me. If you don't do not the nine other tips and juicer cleaning is still too difficult for you right I want to encourage you guys that you are worth it and that you are worth taking some extra time in your day to clean the juicer even if it takes five minutes or some of you guys might be slow and they take ten minutes or whatever right you are worth it because when you juice you are making an investment in your health which is the most important thing that you guys own free and clear your money is not the most important thing your health is your health is your greatest wealth you may have heard this before because if you don't have your health, right, if you're six feet under, you can't enjoy all your money. You can't enjoy your husband. You can't enjoy your wife, your kids. You can't enjoy the movie that's come, the new movie that's coming out Friday night. You can't enjoy playing internet video games. You can't enjoy, you know, anything that you en enjoy doing in your life. You won't be able to enjoy it if you don't have your health. And in my opinion, juicing is the best way uh, to your health, right? Because it's going to maximize the amount of fruits and vegetables that you could get into 
that is just simply lacking in today's society. It allows you to supersize them. And if you're thinking, well, John, wait a second, man, I'm not going to juice, but I'll blend because it's the same thing and blending is a lot easier to do, right? And I would basically tell you guys this, while blending is definitely good because it allows you to, you know, also get some fruits and vegetables in you, you know, which I am 100% an advocate for, everybody should eat more fruits and vegetables, whether they're juiced, whether they're blended, or whether they're eaten whole and chewed into a mush and enjoyed. Um, the, the problem I see with the blenders is that it, number one, doesn't allow you to, you know, supersize the quantities of fruits and vegetables you're eating. For example, I could take five pounds of carrots, put it through the juicer here, it'll make simply five cups of juice, you know, out the juice spout and out this side will come the pulp. And now basically the pulp will get discarded, it'll go into my compost pile, but now I have the uh, five cups of carrot juice. And the carrot juice has the soluble fiber. That's the fiber that's soluble in water. It also contains things like the vitamins and the minerals, and more importantly, a high level of the phytochemicals and phytonutrients. These are the properties in the fruits and vegetables that basically will give us uh, protection from different diseases. So for example, in carrots, in carrot juice and in carrots, they found that there are anti-cancer properties in the carrots and this is what you're going to get uh, when you juice the carrots now if you if you blend carrots number one if you blended five pounds of carrots you're gonna have five pounds of carrot mush that will not taste too good to me maybe to you um, and then it's it's a lot of five pounds of carrot mush that you have to get in so literally it doesn't really change the volume that you're eating because all the fiber is in there now I know some of you guys might be saying but John fiber is necessary and I agree. You know, I'm, I'm not living on a juice diet. I do not advocate living on juice diets for any long periods of time. You know, I like to get some juices and then I also in the daytime I like to get some smoothies and I also eat plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables so I get enough fiber. And I'll tell you guys this, if you guys are eating things like animal foods like meats, dairy, eggs, right? That Guess how much fiber that has? A juice that you make in the juicer that you took all the fiber out has more fiber than, you know, those products that I'm naming you guys, right? So let's think about this for a second. If you want to get some extra fiber in your juice, make the juice and put some ground up flax seeds in there, right? That's going to get you more fiber and in a more beneficial way, in my opinion, uh, than the blending uh, will. And also, you know, once again, five pounds of carrots in the blender makes five pounds of carrot mush. And that's a lot of product to be drinking or eating. In addition, the other reason why I don't think blending is all that great, although I still do blend because there are benefits to it, is that it basically, with every spin of the blender, it's running at a high speed. And every time it's creating a vortex to pull everything in there to blend, people don't realize this, it's oxygenating your food and causing oxidative damage to your food. This is actually quite critical. It's like if you live near the ocean and you scratch your car, and it starts to rust really fast because you're next to the ocean, salt water and whatnot, it's gonna rust very fast. That's the oxidative damage occurring. Now, if you live inland in an arid, dry climate, you scratch your car, it's probably not gonna rust because you know the oxidative damage is not happening as quick, quickly as near the ocean where it's humid and you got all the salt water, ocean water you know, in the air. So what happens at an accelerated rate when a machine's running at 10,000 or 20,000 RPMs compared to, you know, uh, 43 RPMs, a lot of oxidative damage is occurring. Now that probably doesn't damage the minerals or anything like that. And that probably, you know, doesn't damage the, the vitamins all too much. But the thing that is most affected, in my opinion, and from the research I have seen are the phytochemicals. And to me, it, the phytochemicals are the most valuable parts of the juices, not necessarily the fiber. I get enough fiber. Now, for those of you guys that eat meat, that's maybe a little bit different. But nonetheless, the phytochemicals are the most important because those are the ones that are disease protective and can help feed our body what it needs most, the antioxidants and other nutrients. And they did a recent study, just last year actually, where they took broccoli. They blended the broccoli in a blender, in a high-speed blender. They juice the broccoli in a high speed juicer and they also juice the broccoli in a low speed juicer. What they found when they took that broccoli and put it in a petri dish with different kinds of cancer is that overall in general the juice made with the slow juicer had a 50% uh, higher kill rate of those cancer cells 
than the blended or the high speed juice. So, you know, I will ask you, what kind of cancer prevention do you want to have? Do you want to have 100% prevention or, you know, a greater level of prevention with a slow juicer or half as much prevention with a blended smoothie? And you guys get to make your decision on that. I'm just sharing with you guys the data. I have a specific video where I go into the, you know, the, the details of this study more completely. I'll actually put a link down below if you are interested in seeing that episode. But, you know, I do this because I almost lost my life when I was younger. I was in my 20s. I was hospitalized. I had spinal meningitis. The doctor said I might not make it out alive. And, you know, once I got out, I knew that I needed to change my lifestyle because what I was doing was not working. A standard American diet or the vegetarian healthy diet that I thought I was on was not good enough. And that's when I changed my diet, got into juicing and eating copious amounts of fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. And that's what I do to this day to remain healthy and maintain my weight, you know, over the last 20 years, which most people actually can't say. So I want to really let you guys know that from personal experience, this stuff works. And from personal experience, juicing is worth the investment of your time to take an extra five minutes. We all have time to do whatever we want in life. You could be like, you know, spending five extra minutes of not watching that TV show at night, right? Of, of not making that extra phone call when you're just chatting with your friend and it's not really that important, you know? There's so many things you can cut out in your life to take five extra minutes to juice because it all comes down to priorities. So no matter what you guys do, you know, I want to encourage you guys to juice because you are worth it and the juices will make a difference in your life. They have made a difference in mine. And from the, all the testimonials that I hear from people, they've made a whole heck of a lot of difference in people's lives as well. And it's going to be the most bang for the buck. And even if cleaning is difficult, hopefully it's a bit easier with some of these tips. But I want you guys to, you know, get into juicing as a habit that you do each and every day. Not as a juice fast or some kind of fad diet, but juice for breakfast instead of eating your normal breakfast. You will see that you'll be, you know, better able to lose weight or maintain your weight and be healthier, have more energy and have more abundance in your life by simply just adding the fresh uh, juices in your life. And that's, once you start doing that, you notice the results. And then when you notice when you stop juicing because you're traveling, because you're too busy that one day, you just don't feel as good. And that does not feel good when you have such a high level of energy and that energy gets taken away from you. But many of you guys are just not familiar with this. And, and long-term juicers know what I'm talking about. You guys know what I'm talking about. You know, when you juice for a long time and you don't juice a day and then you just feel off, right? It's just not right. So that's why once you get into a habit of juicing every morning for breakfast instead of eating your, your breakfast, you will just want to continue this for the rest of your life. And, you know, hopefully this video has helped you guys out so you can save a little bit more time uh, juicing. Now, if you guys enjoyed this episode, I want to encourage you guys to support me and my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. This goes to directly support me so that I can continue to make educational videos on YouTube, sharing my experiences and sharing my expertise on the juicers with you guys because literally nobody else is really doing this or has a level of expertise that I have. I would also encourage you guys to check out my past episodes. I have over 400 episodes on this YouTube channel dedicated to sharing and comparing different juicers to each other so that you could pick out the right juicer for you. Um, also, be sure to click the subscribe button right down below. I come out with videos about every uh, five to seven days on this channel, you know, sharing with you guys my hints and tips and comparing juicers and other appliances that will allow you to get more fresh fruits and vegetables in you because those are the most important foods on the planet. And be sure to like this video if you liked it. If it will save you some time, if you've gotten some out of this video, please be sure to like it to let me know. I see a lot of likes in these videos and that gets me motivated to make more videos just to help you guys out because, you know, much like you guys, I'm on a journey too. You know, I'm on a health journey. I don't want to be put back in the hospital and the doctors tell me that I might not make it out alive again. So I'm doing everything possible that, that is in my power to do to have the highest level of health. And that's simply what I just love sharing with you guys. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors. All right, this is John Colo at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and today we're going to talk about dehydrators. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the Excalibur brand dehydrators. And I got two dehydrators here, and they're the exact same model. Actually, one is, uh, is my, actually my own personal dehydrator that I've been using for many years, and that's on this side.